Hey everybody, it's Mrs. C. I'm coming to you hopefully with what is going to be a real quick video because I had promised everybody in class that I would give them a quick little overview of the uh, function alphabet. Was it the function alphabet? The func oh no, it was function sign language. I'm sorry. The sign language of functions. It's just a little... I don't know if it's a memory trick because it's it, they're little pictures. Well, why don't I just show you? I'm just let you in on what we got. So, for example, um, <clears throat> the function y is equal to x. Let's just write that down. The function y equals x. The function of y equals x looks about like this. And please pardon the fact that I am not outrageously accurate. But I do have an intuition. I know that that's what the function of y is equal to x looks like. And <clears throat> by knowing that, I, I kind of make it a whole lot easier for me to identify domain and range. For example, if I was going to identify the domain of this function, I would see just automatically that the domain was all real numbers and that the range was also all real numbers. Now, um, just a heads up, guys, I am going to be talking about domain and range. And if you haven't gotten to that video where I talk about uh, domain and range of functions, uh, you might want to just back up, <clears throat> excuse me, and watch that video because I really don't want, excuse me, I don't want, I'm choking over here, I don't want to confuse you. It, it really isn't confusing, but I'm pretty sure if you don't know what I'm talking about with domain and range, you, you'd already be confused. So this is the basic function, the parent function of y is equal to x. Anything we do over here, I'll change my color just to illustrate. Anything I do, for example, subtracting 5 to this parent function, will do something to it. What will subtracting 5 do to it? Well, subtracting 5 will drop this function, the way it looks, this line, down 5 units. Because my constant, or that back number, is my b. And the b is where it hits on the y-axis. So if I find the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I put a little mark so you can see where I'm at. If I drew a line, then that, that's not a line, excuse me. I'm here, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I got it, I got it, like that. That would be the function y is equal to x minus 5. It's the same original parent function y equals x, but translated 5 units down. Now, conversely, y is equal to um, x plus 5, that would be the same line translated 5 units up. So it would look something like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hopefully I'm doing that in my head right. Now these would be parallel, and they don't look so parallel because I, uh, I am on a, a whiteboard application here. It's not as easy to <laughs> do as if you're on graph paper with a ruler. All right, let's move on to the next parent function. I know you're probably thinking, where's the sign language? I'm saving it for the end. All right, another pa parent function, one of my favorites, uh, y equals x squared. y equals x squared. What the heck does that look like? Well, have a little basic intuition of what y equal, what x squared is. x squared, you, you, you take a number, you times it by itself, and you get that output. So if we took zero and times it by itself, what would you get? Yeah, exactly. You get zero. So zero, zero would be one of the points. And I'm going to, let me just, excuse me. Oh, now I got hiccups. Are you kidding me? I'm going to use a, a bigger marker just to show you what I'm doing. So that would be the ordered pair 0, 0. Where did I get 0, 0? I plugged a 0 into x, I squared it, and I got the output x. That would give me the ordered pair 0, 0. Let me try with a bigger number. Let's try uh, 2. If you take 2 and you square it, what do you get? Exactly, 4. So the ordered pair 2, 4 should also be within this function. So I go over 2. And I go up four. One, two, one, two, three, four. I'm about there, right? Now, what about if it had been a negative two on the other side to the left? When you square a negative two, you still got a positive two. Oh my gosh, one, two. And so you would be like that. Looking a little bit like a V, isn't it? It, it does. It look, I mean, it looks exactly like a V. Well, maybe it just looks like three dots to you. I see a V, but, but these are called quadratic functions. They have a square. Quadratic functions aren't Vs. Those are absolute values. Oh, I gave out too much. Let's go to the next value. What if I had said 3? 
3 squared. 3 squared is 9. So if I just go over 1, I'm going to go all the way up to 9, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right there. And again, a negative 3 squared would still be a positive 9. This quadratic actually curves. It doesn't V. It's a curve. Ooh, wow, not the best curve I've ever drawn, but you get the basic idea. Now, quadratics can curve uh, steeply. They can curve uh, very uh, gradually. So you can have a quadratic that looks something more to the effect of of that or super skinny Ooh. or maybe medium all right so you can have all of these different quadratics curving but if they are the parent function they are just going to be a basically you could say a neutral curve where you would not be making it steep you would not be making it gradual and you'd always be sitting on the axis so in this case, let's do that. It just looks a little bit better. So what we find is the y is equal to x squared is going to be a line or a curved line that will be sitting at the origin. Actually, its axis of symmetry, you'll learn all this with quadratics, is the y-axis. It's symmetrical to the y-axis. And anything you do, to y is equal to x squared will change this parent function's position on the graph. Guess what happens if you take y is equal to x squared and you do y is equal to x squared minus 5? Well, what happened, think about it, to the last function when we did the minus 5? It dropped, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's exactly what this curve does. It stays the same but it drops five units. And that is the basics of transforming any function. You take the parent function, you do something to it, like minus five, you get a whole new function. All right, let's try, why am I doing it that way? Let's try another one. Let's do the parent function of, which one shall we do? Y is equal to the absolute value of X y is equal to the absolute value of x, similar to the quadratic, similar, but their values, the values of x do not increase exponentially. They increase at a linear rate. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is, is that there is a direct correlation between whatever happens to the x happens to the y. For example, if you have the absolute value of x, and you say your value of x is 0, then the absolute value of x, of y, of x is 0, making your y 0. The absolute value of 2 is still 2, and you might be thinking, what the heck is absolute value? You know what it is, distance from 0. Absolute value of a negative 3, positive 3. Because absolute value only tells you how far you are from 0, whether you're on the negative side or whether you're on the positive side, you're always going to be positive units from the origin. And so your answers to these absolute value questions are always going to render you a positive outcome. And so when you graph those, they don't curve because they're still like that one-to-one -one relationship. It's not going to be you do something and it goes up exponentially. You do something else, it goes up even higher. These are going to have the same rate of change. So when we have the absolute value of, let me go back to the bigger pen, that would be 0, 0. The absolute value, let's move over a little bit to maybe 5. That's going to be positive 5. So that's going to look 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's really hard to do without the lines I'm finding. There's your V. The next one's not going to curve up that way. The next one is going to come out like that. And there's how we wind up with that little, that pretty little V that we get. Absolute value graphs, a much prettier V than that. Absolute value graphs graph is Vs. And if you minus a value from it, it's going to drop. If you add a value to it, 
it's going to rise. So predictable. That's why it's called graph intuition. You have an intuition as to what the graph is going to do. Now what I want to do is just quickly, I said it was going to be a quick video. I want to pull up for you this sign language, uh, the sign language, um, the art of sign language. Where is the sign language of the, oh boy. Oh, please. Can't find it. Should be right here. Can't find it. O-M-G. It was right in front of me and I couldn't see it. Okay. This is the function sign language. <clears throat> A teacher from the high school gave this to me and I, I have, ever since I've seen it, I've just thought it's the most amazing thing. These this little, I called them stick figures and the class yelled at me. They're not stick figures. Okay. They're little figures, little emojicons, so to speak. And um, they're all doing the cutest little sign languages to give you the actual functions that I went over. And you don't need to know them all. There's some, there's some, um, there's, some uh, fun there's, oh my gosh, I can't think. There's so trig trigonometric functions here with the sine and the cosine. So I thought I would just identify which ones would be, you know, applicable to our class, which is an algebra class. There's, there you go. There's y equals x. Here's y is equal to x squared. Here's y is equal to x cubed. That's a good one. Why don't I underline instead of circle? y is equal to x cubed is awesome. And I'm skipping, I'm skipping y is equal to 1 over x. y is equal to the absolute value of x. y, no, I think we're good. I think anything else, I like this one too. y is equal to a to the x. We'll talk about what the heck is the A, or we're not, why do we have an A all of a sudden. Some of the others, I just want to, let's, maybe we should highlight with a different color, have had a, a slight little transformation to the parent function. For example, where's this one? Here, Y is equal to a negative X. That's the same parent function as Y equal to X, but now they've added the negative to the front of it, which is a transformation. It's actually going to flip that parent function. And as long as you know what a negative does, you don't really need to memorize that. So I am only underlining the ones that I recommend you commit to memory. So let's just go over the, the basics one more time. The y is equal to x, a line going like that. We have the y is equal to, I'm changing colors as I go, y is equal to x squared. There's your quadratic. We have one that we didn't do. I'm not, I wasn't going to do all of them. It was going to be a short video. This is y is equal to x cubed. It goes like that. That's a fun one to look at in a graphing calculator. Let's go with our basic black for y is equal to 1 over x. Now, this is a funny one. This one actually looks like this. And, you know, with the hand gestures, it gets a little lost in translation there. But that's what y is equal to 1 over x looks like. Here is our absolute value. I'm trying to find a color I haven't used yet. Well, absolute value graph like that is a V. And let's do that cute little Y is equal to A to the X. And then a little shout out pink we'll use here. I oh, know that's purple. Sorry, colors are very important. Don't brush me. I'm going go to go to the pink. Okay. And then where are you? What? It's one that looks like that. So these are the ones that I'm going to recommend that you try to commit to memory. And uh, if you have a better way of remembering these, you know, than, than this little function sign language, I'd love to hear it. See my artistic uh, people if they want to give me some other ideas. But uh, definitely try to commit the function to the sign. Let's, let's act it out in class or something fun, right? Make a YouTube video of you dancing around like a like a parent function. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it takes. And um, we'll have more with this later. I'm thinking maybe a follow-up video on maybe the domain and range of these parent functions because I said I was going to do that, and then now that I think of it, I didn't. But I wanted to get this out to you as soon as possible so you can work on memorizing them. And until later, guys, memorize your parent functions, and I will see you on the flip side.